Today we're going to work with operations with rationals still, 2.6 in the textbook on page 115, and in your packets we're on page 17. Um, this is about multiplying and dividing decimals. This is a review of some material that you should know. The only new piece is we're going to be adding some integer symbols to our rational numbers. So now we're going to see negative decimals and negative decimals in a product, negative decimals in a quotient. I would like you to take a moment and review um, example A and B. Now you can see that um, in A, remembering with decimals, key thing to remember is you do not have to line up the decimal points as you can see here. You multiply um, and then in the answer you bring down how many decimal places moving from right to left. So this answer has to be 2 and 732 thousandths because we need three decimal places in our answer because our product had a total of three decimals in it. And a negative rational number times another reg negative rational number is a positive. So there's a mistake here. The product of two decimals with negative, if you would correct this, negative signs is positive. In example B, we're going to be multiplying again two negatives, and they did get that correct. Um, two negatives, same sign there is a positive answer. And we have three tenths and five tenths, and again, it looks like they're lining up decimal points, but with multiplication, you do not have to line up decimal points. That's only with adding and subtracting, and negative four and three tenths times negative one and five tenths gives you six and 45 hundredths. Yes, positive six and 45 hundredths. Letter C should look familiar from our percent unit, how to find a percent of a number you must change that percent to a decimal because percent means out of a hundred, seven hundredths or the decimal seven hundredths. To find seven percent of 890, we multiply, of means multiply. So here you can see $890 times seven percent would give you $62.30. Notice the dollar sign on that answer there. And of course, they're both positive rational number, so that answer is going to be positive. With division, hopefully you're going to remember this. When you're dividing by a decimal, you must make your divisor a whole number by moving the decimal over to making so that it's a whole number. And it's like multiplying by 10. 1 and 2 tenths, when you move it one place to the right, it's taking that 1 and 2 tenths and multiplying by 10. Well, if you multiply your divisor by 10, you also have to multiply your dividend by 10. So they've moved it over and brought it up into the quotient, so the decimal place will be in the right place of the quotient. And dividing by one negative does give you a negative answer. So take a moment and uh, make sure that you read over these four examples here. It's going to help us on the next page on page 18. We're going to practice a couple multiplication and division problems together. So turn the page. At the top of page 18 you can see some products and some quotients. I'm not going to do all of these. Um, we'll get to practice a bunch in class tomorrow. But I am going to do a couple of them. Um, I'm going to do number 9. Negative 5 and 3 tenths times negative 2 and 8 tenths a negative times a negative rational number will give me a positive answer. I do know that. 5 and 3 tenths times 2 and 8 tenths. 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. Um, 8 times 5 is 40 and 2 makes 42. Place value. I'm going to put down my 0 to hold my place value. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. I've already used that 2 so don't add it back in. 4 and 0 makes 4, 2 and 6 makes 8, 4 and 0 makes 4, and 1, so I'm adding. Now I have two decimals, one in each of my um, multiplicands here, so in my product, in the answer, I have to have two decimal places. So yes, my answer is 14 and 84 hundredths. Another little review of percent here, 4% of $19. Changing that 4% to the decimal 4 hundredths 
and then multiplying by 19. 19 times 4, 4 times 9 is 36, carry the 3, 4 times 1 is 4, plus that 3 makes 7, and you're probably saying to yourself, oh, it's supposed to be 19 times 4 hundredths, I know it's a 0 there, and I have two decimal places in my product, so my answer has to have two decimal places in it, and yes, this answer is 76 cents, because we're talking about money here in number 11. Um, to divide, now this might be a little bit harder for you, um, we haven't done long division and a lot of you are used to using a calculator. So let's do number 13 together, 11 and 36 hundredths divided by my divisor 1 and 6 tenths. So the divisor always goes outside in the divisor position, outside of the box or the house, whatever you call it in long division. Remember, your divisor has to be a whole number, so I'm going to multiply by 10, move the decimal over, now I have 16 out there, and do the same to my dividend. If I move over one place in my divisor, I move over one place in my dividend, hopefully that sounds familiar, and immediately bring that up to my quotient, bring that decimal point up. So I have 16, does it go into 1? No. Does it go into 11? No. Does it go into 113? Yes, 7 times. 7 times 16 is 112. Subtracting, I get 1, bring down my 6. Oh, 16 goes into 16 one time. My remainder is 0, so I'm done with my quotient. 1 negative in my in my uh, quotient here is going to give me my answer that's negative 7 and 1 tenth. Since my divisor is negative, 1 negative gives me a negative 7 and 1 tenth as my answer. Um, let's do number 15, just one more of those. 73 and 53 hundredths divided by 9 tenths. And again, 1 negative in my quotient here. I know for number 15 my answer is going to be negative divided by 9 tenths, 0 and 9 tenths. So again, I'm going to move my decimal over to make that whole number 9, move it over one place in my dividend, put it up into my quotient. Does 9 go into 7? No. 9 goes into 72 8 times. Very close to 73 there. When I subtract, I get 1, bring it down. My next number, I have 15. 9 goes into 15 1 time. Oops, and I get 9. No oh, tens there. And uh, subtracting, I get 6. Bring down. 63. 9 goes into 63 7 times. 7 times 9 is 63. And when you subtract, yes, you get 0 as your remainder. So I have the answer is negative 81 and 7 tenths. So if you're, uh, while we're practicing in class tomorrow, if you're having some trouble with the multiplication or division, please make sure that I stop by your desk. A couple um, word problems that have to do with multiplying and dividing. Uh, let's do number 17. A hot air balloon rose four and a half feet for 20 seconds, rose, going up, hot air balloon, and then descended two and one tenths feet per second for 10 seconds. Two and one tenth feet per second. Oh, there's a rate there. Per for ten seconds. So, what is the change in the altitude of the hot air balloon? Four and a half feet for twenty seconds. I'm going to have to multiply that to see how much it's been going up. So, four and a half feet times twenty, and then it's going to be descending. So, I'm going to subtract a two and a half foot per second for 10 seconds descent from my ascension there, and uh, that will give me my total change in altitude. Four and a half times 20, well I'm going to use some mental math here. Four and a half times 2, I know that's 9, bring along the 0 from my 20, and 2 and 1 tenth times 10, I was just doing that in my uh, divisors over there, multiplying by 10, moves my decimal one place to the right, so that's 21. 90 take away 21, so I went up 90 feet and then went down 21 feet in the descent. So my change in altitude is 69 feet. And my sentence answer to my 
word problem. Lot number 19 is very similar to that. The, you're going below sea level, but then you're dropping down. A diver at 20 and a half feet below sea level dives further down at one and a half feet per second for 15 seconds. How deep is he below sea level? So he's continuing to go further down. He's at negative 20 and a half feet to start with and then continues to go further down. One and a half feet per second is his rate for 15 seconds. So I'm going to have to multiply that first to find the total depth of going down the descent again. I know 15 times 15. It's a times fact that I know. 15 squared It's a perfect square. 15 squared, the answer would be 225. But I do have one decimal in my product. So this is uh, 22 and a half feet that he's going down, further down. So he's at negative 20 and a half feet. And he's going to go further down 22 and a half feet. So this is a subtraction of a rational number. Keep the first one, add the opposite of the second one. So yes, I am going to add those together now because they have the same signs, add and keep. So 20 and a half feet plus that 22 and a half feet, those two halves make a whole. And I get 43 feet. How deep is he below sea level? So the diver is 43 feet below sea level. I could answer it that way, or I could say the diver is at negative 43 feet. So I could either use the words below sea level or use negative 43 feet in my answer. Either one of those would be correct. A baseball cap costs $18 plus 5% tax. How much does that cap cost? So I have to do 5% of $18. Well, changing my percent to a decimal and then multiplying. I'm going to find my tax and then add it on. That's one way I could do this. Find 5% of 18 and add that tax on to the $18. Or, since I know tax is added on to the 100% that I'm already going to pay, all 100% of that $18 plus 5% more tax, I could do 1.05 times 18. Well, I happen to know 5% of 18 or 5 times 18, that's 90 cents. 1 and five hundredths times 18, that's going to give me $18.90, adding that 90 cents on. So the cap cost, or costs $18.90. So you can either find the 5% separately and then add that 18 plus the 90 cents afterwards, that's uh, method one, or method two here, you could find 105% of $18, and that will get you directly to that $18.90. Now, I did a little mental math here, there. I know 5 times 18 is 90. So you may have had to go over to the side and multiply if I was going too quickly. And yes, if you multiplied 18 times 500, you would get 90 cents there. Okay, um, number 24 and 25 look like some order of operations problems with rational numbers. I have adding and subtracting in number 24. In number 25, I have subtraction, adding, multiplying, and subtracting. Um, I'm going to let you do number 24 on your own. So um, if you want to pause the video now and see if you can get to the correct answer, doing the correct order of operations there, it's adding and subtracting. It's a little review from yesterday. You do have to line up your decimal points. Pause the video now and see if you can do number 24 on your own. The answer to number 24, if you did it correctly, would be 62 and 28 hundredths. Now, if you can't get that answer uh, or didn't get that answer, take a moment, pause the video again, and see if you can work this out to get the correct answer for number 24. If not, if you can't find your error, 
make sure I stop at your desk tomorrow to help you out with that. Um, I would have done, just a little hint here, I would have taken 49 and 3 hundredths and subtracted 7 and 8 tenths, then changed this to add the opposite, which means you then have to add 21 and 5 hundredths to whatever that sum was for the first part of it. So that might have been your error here, changing the integer part of it. See if that helps. Let me know tomorrow. Uh, number 25. We have subtracting, adding, multiplying, and subtracting. Well, I know from order of operations that I have to multiply first. So 4 and 2 tenths times 3 tenths. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 1, 2 decimal points. So I get 1 and 26 hundredths there is the product, the answer to that product. So 21 and 4 tenths minus 6 and 2 tenths plus... 1 and 26 hundredths minus 2 and 6 tenths. That's what I have left. So I bring down and work down all the operations that I have left. I have adding and subtracting left. And you should work left to right. However, there's another way I could do this. I'm going to put my two negative um, numbers together, my two negative rationals, and my two positives. I'm going to regroup or use the associative property here. 21 and 4 tenths plus... 1 and 26 hundredths. And from that, I'm going to um, subtract my 6 and 2 tenths, same signs add and keep. That's negative 6 and 2 tenths and negative um, 2 and 6 tenths. I'm going to subtract that from my adding of 21 and 4 tenths and 1 and 26 hundredths. Yes, those are negative because I could change this to add the opposite. The opposite. Um, so putting my positive 21 and 44 tenths and my positive 1 and 26 hundredths together, I'll run out of space here, 21 and 4 tenths plus my 1 and 26 hundredths, annexing a 0, 6, 6, 2, 2, I get 22 and 66 hundredths minus. 6 and 2 tenths, come over here, 6 and 2 tenths, and that 2 and 6 tenths, they're both negative. Same signs, add and keep. So I'm going to subtract 8 and 8 tenths from my 22 and 66 hundredths. Different signs, subtract 22 and 66 hundredths minus that 8 and 8 tenths. 6 take away 0 is 6. Oh, I'm going to have to borrow a couple times here. 16 take away 8 is 8. 11 take away 8 is 3. And I get 13 and 86 hundredths. Now, I know I went a little fast on that one. Again, if you need some uh, further explanation on this one, uh, you could pause, start, you know, replay any part of that, or come in tomorrow and ask me questions tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be working on pages 19 and 20.